Have you ever wished that the Great British Bake Off was lower budget, Danish, and followed knitters instead of bakers? Well, have I got a show for you. The other day, I was just Googling around and I happened upon this show, Den Storstreikedust, or The Great Knit Off. So today, we're gonna take a little break from the drama and talk about The Great Knit Off. So when I first found the show, I was like, oh great, I'll like watch all of the show and then I'll tell you about it. But uh, the show is in Danish and I don't know Danish. And while I did genuinely consider trying to learn Danish, for some reason, I'm only on level one of Danish Duolingo. And the only words I know how to say are hi, I, and am. But that means I have just enough words to say this. Hi alle sammen. Ja, I am og willkommen tilbage til mi kanal. Leo say den storch der I could use. So I've been watching a lot of TV over the holidays and I thought it would be nice to relax with some nice clean fun. And speaking of clean, wake up, look around. It's 2024. And 2024 is going to be the year that we clean our houses and keep them clean. And we're gonna do it by wasting less and saving more. Thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Blue Land. Blue Land offers refillable cleaning products that are effective, convenient, and affordable. They are a certified B Corporation, EPA certified, and climate neutral certified. Now, personally, I made the switch to Blue Land to save money and reduce waste. I've always preferred refillable products over single use ones, and now it's easier than ever to keep things clean and feel good while doing it. Let's do some quick math. Traditional soaps are usually five to six dollars a bottle, and you end up just having to throw it out at the end or purchase a bunch of clunky refills and find a place to store them. Blue Land's refill tablets start at $2.25, and when you buy a bottle, you can use it forever. All you need to clean is this nickel-sized tablet. So I got the Clean Essentials bundle with a multi-surface cleaner for my multiple surfaces, a bathroom cleaner for my bathroom, and a glass and mirror cleaner because dirty mirror selfies are out for 2024. And last but not least, a foam hand soap. All you have to do is fill your bottle with warm to hot water, drop one of the tablets into the bottle, and use in minutes with no shaking or stirring involved. Not only is it easy, but the refillable bottles are really cute in my opinion as well. If you care about being clean like I do, then try Blue Land for yourself. Get your first purchase of Blue Land for 15% off by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen. So if you see my home starting to look cleaner than ever, it's all thanks to Blue Land. Thank you again to Blue Land for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. The Great Knit Off is a Danish competition show that aired three seasons from 2014 to 2016 and is judged by Vitard Willemsen and Christelle Seyfarth. Season one is hosted by Christina Hoffman and seasons two and three are hosted by Kushi Radhakrishnan. So the first judge, Vitard Willemsen, is also known as the Prince of Knitting by some of his followers. He is a Danish knitwear designer and the author of Texperimenture. In addition to his book, he publishes his patterns on Ravelry and teaches workshops and lectures worldwide. He's not super active on social media and there's not a ton of information out there about him so this is kind of all we got for now. The other judge is Christelle Seyfarth. She is another successful Danish knitwear designer who specializes in intricately designed colorwork patterns on mostly shawls and coats. I'm absolutely blown away by all of her designs. Like look how cool this coat is with poppies all over it. She lives and designs on Fenner, the small island off the west coast of Denmark and cites the island as a great source of inspiration for her work. She also runs a yarn store on the island and hosts several knitting retreats both on Fenne and Shetland and Archipelago in Scotland. So the episode that I'm going to be watching today is season one, episode nine. And while that sounds random, it is. That's just one of the two episodes that they added English subtitles for. So that's what we're going to watch. Welcome to the store Strikedyst, where we find South and Sønderjylland's best amateur strikers. Here's a brief overview of what happens in the season up to this point. So the structure of the show is very similar to the Great British Bake Off. The B-roll, the shots, the music, the way that the judges stand, like it's very much, very clearly inspired by that show, which I think is really fun. They start off with 16 different contestants split into the first two episodes. So episode one has the first eight contestants and then episode two has the second eight contestants. And one of the contestants is Koshi who will go on to host seasons two and three. So in these first two episodes, the two challenges that they have are first to knit a baby sock. Baby sock, baby sock. Baby sock. Baby sock. And then the second challenge was to knit a scarf or a hellstock. Hellstock. Something I noticed is that in the first few episodes, a lot of the contestants don't finish their projects. There's a lot of unfinished projects, but as the episodes go on in the season, more and more of them are showing up finished. And it's interesting how the people that make it all the way to episode nine 
they are clear front runners right from the beginning. I do wish that I could have watched the entirety of season one. It was kind of fun to go through and watch some of the sections without context. Sometimes I could sort of guess what was going on, especially with the challenges. There's the visual element of like, you know, when they're getting close, you can sort of hear the inflection in the voices and tell what they're saying. But anyway, now that some of that context is all out of the way, let's jump into watching. So the five contestants in this episode are Annette, Irene, Ula, Marie, and Dorta. The first challenge of the day is to knit a hairband that represents the worst time in your life, which is kind of crazy, kind of crazy. They want these people to be unpacking trauma on TV. They want to get them in this competitive mode. This is really where you can see the producers come in and they're like, okay, we got to make everybody cry. And guess what they did? They made me sob. When I first watched this episode, I was bawling my eyes out. So yeah, that's their first challenge. One hour to knit a headband. They are allowed to go into the back, into the yarn shop, and go back in as many times as they want during the challenge. So there's the stress of having to knit something this fast. But then there's also the added layer of having to like dig deep into some sort of personal trauma or hardship that they have gone through to be able to participate in the challenge. Hi, Annette. Hey. Det lyder lidt sammenbit. Jeg har hørt lov, lille En halv time igen, og sætter turbo på. Nu kører det igen. Ja, nu skal jeg til at strikke snoning, så det er jo en snot vej, vi nogle gange kommer igen med. Der er fem minutter tilbage. Fem minutter for hundt også. Nej, nej, nej. Der er der tre minutter tilbage, så hvis I ikke er begyndt at afslutte, så er det nok en rigtig god idé. They've just spent all of this time knitting the headband, then they have to stand up to the judges and present the story behind why they made the headband why they did, and essentially talk about a really hard time in their life on camera on this knitting show. So Meta comes up and talks about how after she went through her divorce, she had a really hard time managing the house and the kids and her full-time job, but she managed to come out the other side and bloom again. And to represent that, she knit a little flower onto the headband. Irene comes up and says that she made the headband for her mom who died of Alzheimer's the previous year. She says she chose bright colors for her piece because her mom was a very cheerful person and she wanted to capture that in the headband. Ula's next. She has knit some twisted cables over her head band in a black yarn. Og de snoninger, de simpliserer de øh, syv gange. Jeg har siddet ved nogen i familien, der ikke kunne længere. Det at sidde ved sådan nogle døende, det er hårdt, men øh, det er også dejligt at tænke på bagefter. Så derfor, den lyse side er der også. Ja, der er ekstraordinært dem pause i den store strikkedyst oven på Ulas historie om at våge ved de døende. Dorda goes next and she talks about how her husband died when she was 38 and she was left alone with three children to take care of. Og nogle snoninger, fordi der er en hård periode, man skal igennem, så har jeg lavet vævestrik og væver noget grønt ind i som håbet. But even still, her headband has a message of hope and light after the dark times. And even what I said earlier about the producers clearly like manipulating the moment to make everyone emotional, this moment doesn't feel overly produced. The judges, the host, and all of the participants are all crying. They're all doing that thing where because you're crying, but then you like start laughing because you can't hold it back anymore. That's what just keeps happening here. And it is really sweet to watch. The clips I'm about to show talk a little bit about pregnancy loss. If you don't want to see that for any reason, then skip ahead to this timestamp. De her små glimtesten beskriver de børn, der er i mit liv. Og Ronja og Sirka og en lille en, som ikke kom og blev til noget. Og når man står på sådan en parkeringsplads, på et sygehus dagen efter, man har født et barn, der ikke kunne leve. Så har man brug for sådan en lille tov at holde fast i. <laughs> okay, I didn't think I would cry again. One second. <laughs> okay, anyway, the judges go through and they give their critiques and then they come back in the room and give sort of more polished and condensed feedback to all of the participants. Something I really like in this show is that they're just nice, especially on this challenge, I think because of the nature of the topic that they were knitting the project for. The judges just kind of give everyone compliments and then the person who ends up winning, they give them like more compliments. They don't really give anyone any critiques on their project. And they eventually choose Dorta as the winner because she combined colors, materials, techniques in a way that the judges were looking for. Og som I nok har lagt mærke til, så ligger der en masse t-shirts her på bordet. So for this challenge, the contestants are each given a blank white t-shirt and they're told that they need to create a knitted top out of it. The only rules for this one was that the finished item had to be a top. It couldn't be like bottoms or a skirt or a dress or anything and that a substantial part of the finished piece should be knitted. For this challenge, they were given four hours. Tiden begynder nu. Jeg 
Jeg kan fortælle jer, at der er en time tilbage. Der er to minutter, til I skal være færdige med jeres overdel, og den skal hænge over på ginerne. Okay, here are my critiques for these ones. So the first one is Annette. She used the arm knitting to add this upper area connecting the top. She cut her t-shirt up into strips and used it for yarn as like a ribbing on the bottom of it. And she added several different panels with different textures and different colors. I really like this one. I think the Instagram girlies of 2023-2024 would absolutely eat this up. I think she killed it. I really like this one. I think it not only follows the prompt really well, but it also has turned into a garment that's actually like pretty cool and that looks finished and complete and not rushed. My biggest complaint for this one is just the colors. I do kind of wish that the blue and green of the arm knitted parts matched the blue and green of the rest of the chest parts better, but for four hours, pretty good. It might be a shocker, but I do actually like this one as well. I love the colors and I really like the idea of adding a little cape shawl thing to the t-shirt. The one thing I really don't like about this one is that thing that Christelle pointed out on the bottom. I can't even tell what it is because they don't really show a good close-up, but it's just these like random strings hanging out and I, I don't love that choice, but she made a choice. It didn't quite work for me but I actually do like the lacy shawl cape thing. Irene's don't love this one, just personally. I think it's a cool idea to like crochet around the edges and make it a vest, but the belt doesn't really work for me. The random little things don't really work for me compared to the other two that we saw. It's not as much like knitted or crocheted fabric. Like we're really just seeing like a lining around the edges. Okay, the judges don't love this one. They don't like that Ula made a harness and then put it on top of the t-shirt instead of somehow connecting them or making the t-shirt into the harness. But I like this one too. This is another one that I think on the right model with the right lighting and the right pose would kill on Instagram today. Really like the colors on this one. I even like the random little hole that she put in the t-shirt. And I do actually like the idea of having this skimpy little harness thing, but then underneath it is just a white t-shirt. So if you wear it, you get the fun of having this experimental piece on, but you're not actually exposing yourself at all. The judges also didn't like the back, which has a big slit and a cross. And I do like it. It looks a little bit off center, which is kind of off-putting, um, hard to tell. Again, they don't really show any good angles, but I do like this, I like this concept. Okay, the judges love this one by Marie. Personally, I do not like this. I, I see the vision, I see what she's trying to do. It just looks too high school theater costume to me, where they're doing the Music Man with a budget of $5 and they're like, everybody has to go make their own costume. So you just make one with a white t-shirt. That's kind of what this is giving to me. And I'm sorry if that's rude. I'm sorry, Marie, if you somehow happen to see this. I love a lot of your other pieces on the show. This one just, it's not, it's not giving what I know it could give. And eventually the judges come back and give their final scores. They rank Annette's really cool open knit top as the best and end up sending Irene home. There's a really sad talking head at the end where she says, I know sagt, men jeg var godt klar over det. Åh, det var det de andre de er bare de er bedre, bare bare den tænd bedre. It just like breaks my heart cuz they're all so talented. They're all doing so well in these challenges. I don't even I don't even want anyone to go home. The thing about this that almost doesn't work for me is that it's a competition show and there has to be some sort of competition, right? People have to get eliminated, they have to get sent home. But I after watching one episode, love all five of these people and I want to just watch them do the challenges. I want the whole season to just be like four or five people doing a bunch of challenges, of knitting challenges, making them do crazier and crazier things, and then just not even having a winner, just being like, you all did a great job, that, that was so cool. I did look into it a little bit to see if I could figure out what the prize was and it's probably something they say in one of the episodes that I just like, uh, couldn't understand because again, if you forgot, I don't speak Danish. So to any of my Danish followers out there, if you happen to watch this and catch what the prize is, then let me know because I'm curious, but not curious enough to learn Danish in like a week. I think this is a really interesting concept for a show because like any of you know who knit, it's a very slow process. And so to put a strict time limit on something where not only are the contestants being asked to complete a project in a really short amount of time, they also have to design and choose the yarn for the pattern in that time limit. One of the contestants who was actually on season two, Rebecca, made a few posts on Ravelry and Reddit, uh, allowing people to ask her questions about the process. Every episode was filmed in one day on four separate weekends. They also got all of the challenges in real time, except for one of them where they were given like 
like an hour to think about it. And then in addition to them actually being filmed doing all of the knitting, they had to go back and get all of the talking head reaction shots, like, you know, in the Great British Bake Off where they're like, oh my God, I'm so stressed. And those were filmed sometimes hours after the fact. She said, Sometimes it was really annoying to get taken out of knitting furiously to answer questions about the last challenge, and it felt like they were posing the same question in three ways. There were also leading questions, which I found somewhat annoying. They wanted us to be very competitive against each other, but all in all, the crew were very nice. Some of my criticisms of the show are mostly just things that probably are budget restrictions. I really wish that they had more high quality close-up shots of all of the pieces after they finished, just like they do in Bake Off where they do like pan in on the cake and you can really see it and see all the details because I do find it hard to understand what the judges are saying when I can't really see the piece up close. And I do feel like the B-roll outside of the castle is a little bit lacking, especially if they're going for the Great British Bake Off style B-roll with like the little critters and stuff. It's sort of just like a drone shot of the castle. And again, I'm critiquing a piece of media that's 10 years old and and my other critique is I feel like it would be fun to have more smaller challenges instead of just the two big ones. I'm sure again that's just a budget restriction they can't be filming for hours and hours and there's only so much time you can allot and if you have a four hour challenge there's like a lot of things that you can't do but I think it would be fun to do more like short speed challenges. But I guess really the last thing I want to say is that I would love to see another version of this from another country. I think it'd be so fun to see like a German knit off or an Australian knit off or an American knit off or just anything. In some of the articles that I read about this show, they said that the show was met with great success and other networks were looking at purchasing the rights to the idea. I don't know what happened with that. It seems like this just sort of faded away. But if anyone knows anyone in TV producing, especially in like competition show producing, get this shit back on the air. Get somebody, somebody needs to make this. I would watch so much of this. This show specifically is looking for the best amateur knitter. I would love to see a competition show of people who are professional knitters, knitwear designers, people who think that they are the shit and will bring out a competitive spirit because I think that would be really fun to watch. Imagine a lineup of 12 big knitting influencers, put them all in a room, give them some yarn, make it a contest, make them more chaos. The show needs more chaos, but overall I think they did a great job. The judges are clearly super knowledgeable about the subject. The participants are all genuinely very sweet and have really nice camera presences. But overall, this was really enjoyable to watch. Was not expecting to cry. Was not expecting to cry on rewatch of the episode as well. And I just, I would love to see more stuff like this. I love making my heavily researched video essays, but it was also really fun to just like sit down and watch a show. So if you happen to come across any interesting crafting TV shows or movies that you would want me to make a video on, then send them my way. I don't know. I love watching things and I love talking about things. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different than some of my other videos, but if you liked it, if you stuck around, like the video. Also subscribe if you'd like to hear more about crafting media and craft dramas. More drama coming this way later on in January. And if you want to support me financially, you can find my Patreon listed below. Thank you so much, everyone. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.